Though I've always been a bit plain, Aaron was good looking and popular since he was young. As he got older, he became even more and a lot of under and upperclassmen into him. He would receive so many chocolates presents on Valentine's Day every that he would ask me to help him eat because he wouldn't be able to on his own. I was lucky enough to be by his side. People envied me. Aaron and I started dating in high, which made the number of people who grow even more. They don't match. It's not cute. There's no way the other female students would all say things like that. Even though I was plain looking beside myself, I began to take care of myself. When I entered university, nobody knew me by name anymore. Aaron and I got married after graduating from university. We got along well with each other during the wedding ceremony, which passed smoothly. We started living together, but since we both had full-time jobs, we didn't have all that much time together. Because of this, we came up with the, if we had time, we would always eat together. We would make as much time for each possible and did what we could to peer relationship. But what I didn't know was that there was a woman who had been bothering my husband since university. Until that woman began stirring on comment. Until that woman began stirring up. It began when Aaron brought home son handmade sweets that someone had G at work. I'm home. Someone gave me sweets again. Let's together. Recently, you've been getting sweets week. That date, sweets were heart-shaped cookies. Someone liked him. When I spoke to Aaron about it, I found that all the sweets he'd received were from the same person. Even though he tried to refuse, she insisted that he take them. So... Recently, Aaron had been trying to turn them down. My husband always wore his wedding, made him lunch to take to work ever. So that woman knew very well that he married. I opened up Aaron's lunchbox so I could see the Tupperware inside. And at the very bottom, I noticed there was a tiny note. I thought that maybe a note from AR had accidentally fallen into his pocket. But when I opened the note, I saw that it had nothing to do with his job. Let's get married. I was written on a tiny white piece of paper. I was about to show my husband, but I thought it might make things easier for him at work, so I changed my mind. I was proud to be the wife of someone so popular, but to think that this would continue even at this age. From that day on, I regularly looked notes that woman slipped into his one and every time I would let out a bit. He must also be tired of her. He began taking naps before dinner. He's been pressured by women like this before, but this was the first time he felt so tired of it. Are you okay? You seem exhausted lately. I'm probably tired because work has busy. I'll go to sleep a bit earlier tonight. After saying that, Aaron took a shot of whiskey and went to sleep. Maybe because he was so tired, he fell asleep on top of the living room couch. Just as I picked up his phone to put it on his bedside table, he received a text. His phone vibrated four more times. Since I was holding his phone, I saved notifications for those five texts. They were from a woman named Sarah. She seemed to be urging him to reply. I thought to myself that it must have been who had been giving him sweets recently. I didn't feel the need to look through messages, so I just put Aaron's name next to his side of the bed. I had a sinking feeling that something was about to happen, so I couldn't sleep all that night. A few days later, Aaron texted me asking if I wanted to go out for dinner without him because he was going out drinking with colleagues. I was a bit worried about that. I told him to call me if anything happens, and he told me it'll be okay. He probably didn't want me to worry. He knew that many people have been me since we were in high school, so he probably didn't want me to go that same sort of trouble now that adults. He's probably trying his best to calm the situation down on his own, but women are not making it any easier. He might not even realize what she 
I knew he could be too kind for his own good, so I wished he would ask me to be his wife. That day, I ate out and bought myself a dessert on the way home. Around the time I thought Aaron would come home, the doorbell rang. Excuse me, this is Mr. Smith's house, right? Through security camera, I saw a young man. They were carrying my husband between them. I quickly opened the door. The young man carried Aaron up to Old Man's Peak, and I was left alone with the woman who smiled at me. I'm sorry about this. Thank you for taking care of my drunk husband. It's okay. Ah, uh, here some sweets I made. I noticed that the sweets she handed me were in the same packaging as all. The others my husband had received recently and the blood drained from my face. This is definitely that woman, Sarah, who liked Aaron. I thanked her and took the sweets. When are you and your husband going to divorce? She whispered into my ear. She gave me a carefree smile, but wife, I was furious. She looked me up and down and seemed to be saying that she thought she was better than I. I glared at her. Aaron's colleague left him on his bed and then they left. I decided I would tell Aaron he should get a job when he wakes up. With my salary and savings, we could even if he doesn't work for a while. I felt like our relationship was at his stayed near that woman any longer. A few hours later, Aaron woke up and him a cup of soup I had made. He seemed confused how he had made, so I explained everything. Aaron made a guilty looking face and his face turned blue. Sue. She didn't, but I told him what Sarah had said to me. I also revealed that I had seen the message she sent him a few days back. Aaron let out a sigh and placed his head in his hands. Seeing him like this, I understood, hadn't told me because he didn't war worry. I didn't want him to be troubled with any more. So I spoke to him about changing his job. He didn't want to bother me while he was looking for a new job, but eventually agreed. The next day, Aaron spoke to his boss quit. When Sarah realized Aaron wasn't at home, she assumed he was sick and went straight to his house to take care of him. I would try to push her to leave, but then burst into tears. It was a deal breaker. If you keep this up, I will call the... I was just worried about him. Sarah began coming over nearly every was getting scary. I would have to put all my efforts into pushing her out of the house. Aaron was getting tired of her too. At this point, she was basically, uh, things escalated day by day. At Aaron's old job, they tried to cover up. The fact that he quit by saying he had changed departments, but she ran all over the company trying to find him. I called the police on her and they gave her a severe warning. After the police got involved, she came to our home. When things calmed down, Aaron began for a new job and managed to find or relatively quickly. His new office was a bit far from home, but he really gave it his all there. For a while, we returned to our lives. I'm relieved everything has calmed again. I blocked her number too. I hope Eve will be okay from now on. We were a bit worried that it might happen again, but we tried to move on. A few months later, on the way home, Aaron jumped out into the street to young child. He got hit by a truck and passed away. He was such a kind person. He even tried to save that child. I couldn't be prouder but suddenly losing someone I loved so much. By the time I made it to the hospital that day, he had already passed away. I burst out crying. Even now, when I'm at home alone, I feel like he'll walk in with a big smile on his face any minute. I organized the funeral and invited family and close friends. Of course, I didn't invite anyone from my old job. Seeing his face peacefully sleeping like crying, I love your smile so much, so please stop smiling. I'm sure he wouldn't want to see me. Since he passed away so suddenly, I regretted leaving me alone the way. But he definitely wouldn't regret having protected that child. 
he saved a life. I'm sure he would tell me to snap out of it. So I decided that after the funeral, try to move forward with my life. For the sake of the husband I loved, I would not have done it. When he passed, the police gave me cell phone. Looking through it, there were many of me smiling, some I didn't even remember. When I saw that, without thinking, I Aaron's phone close to my body, I noticed that he had a huge number of notifications. Surprised, I checked and saw the, uh, from Sarah. She had found and followed Aaron on every social media platform possible. It seems we hadn't been able to stop her overwhelming feelings for Aaron. Aaron wasn't really the type to go media much, so he hadn't seen most notifications and messages. There were even messages from after away. From the looks of it, she sent him messages per day. Her feelings for him never changed. I peeked at her social media profile and saw that all her posts were lies. She was out with Aaron, being loved by him. She's been posts every day. Of course, since Aaron passed away in any of her new posts, seeing her profile felt gross. In truth, I was disgusted. She didn't know that he had passed away. Anyone who knew him saw his page. What do you think? I'm sure even my husband would be ashamed if he looked down from heaven and saw what was happening. As I was thinking this, I headed off. I had plans to eat dinner with Aaron that night, so after I finished work, quickly went to the restaurant we were supposed to meet at. Uh, my mother-in-law must be lonely since her husband passed away. Occasionally, we would go out to dinner at Aaron's grave together. Thank you for always making time to... Aaron will always be in my heart. S need anyone else. My mother-in-law worried about me so much that she asked if something was wrong because it had been a long time since I had returned to work after my maternity leave. But as I told her, Aaron was the one. I had no plans on meeting someone else. I was happy how I was. Can I come over to look through your old pictures of uh, Aaron tonight? I nodded. After we finished dinner home together, when we arrived at my house, we saw a woman and what appeared to be her parents standing outside. I wondered if something might be hey home, but looking closer, I realized was Sarah. What are you doing in front of my house? The three of them turned and looked at angrily. My mother-in-law probably had no idea what was going on. She didn't know who those people were. I opened the door and let my mother into the house and then I turned to and her parents and asked them why here again. Her mother was the first person to... Your husband impregnated my daughter. How can you talk to us with that attitude? What are you talking about? Sarah's father began ranting angrily. But no matter what they said, my mother-in-law and I couldn't understand what was going on. Sarah's father continued to yell as Sarah clung onto him and cried. Your husband got me pregnant. Divorce him and give me this house. I don't understand what you're saying. I can't divorce him either. The three of them screamed at me. They told me to stop messing around, bring my husband to them. Hearing them say all this nonsense, my mother-in-law was outraged. What are you saying? Aaron, who was Sue's husband and my passed away five years ago. Sarah and her parents were silent. Then they began to repeat that we should stop. When I explained to them what happened years ago and that the woman was Aaron's mother, they went pale. Their shocked faces were incredible. I have to give her credit. Sarah was completely delusional. You must be lying. Sarah slumped to the ground and began to cry. Knowing the truth, she was overcome with sadness and realized that her lies would no longer work. Her father began yelling at her for her mother had not known the truth, but her face suddenly went bright red with embarrassment. The whole time, my mother-in-law 
continued to scream at them. Now that you understand, please leave. My mother-in-law entered the house, shut the door. We could clearly hear them yelling on the other side of the door, but we didn't pay any attention to them anymore. I explained everything about Sarah's mother-in-law. She hugged me tightly while crying. She wished she had known earlier so could have done something to help. Her kindness almost made me cry. I and stroked her back. It's okay, I'm Aaron's wife after all. After we both calmed down a bit, my mother-in-law headed home. I offered to drop her off, but she said she'd be fine on her own. I looked at a photo of Aaron on the let out a big sigh. We've been through a lot of trouble of Sarah, but I'm sure this is the last of it. Her parents must be incredibly angry her. I considered reporting her to the police, but I decided against it in the end. I checked on her social media account and saw that she had deleted everything. Tommy relief, she also stopped send messages. I put my hand on the photo of Aaron, closed my eyes. She finally understood. The next day, Sarah's parents came sweets to apologize. They said they wanted to apologize too, so they stepped inside. They stopped in front of a photo of apologized out loud. I glared at them and said, promise me something. I told them that if they promised me not to let their daughter come near me again, if you ever do, I will call the police. I told them what Sarah had done to me and they promised me they wouldn't bother me again. This should be the end of it. I'm sure even Aaron is relieved up. Sarah's parents left. It's incredible how dedicated Sarah was, but I want her to understand how much she caused us. I hope she can also be happy one day. A few more years passed since then, but I still hadn't considered getting remarried. I'm sure I never will. Aaron will always be the one in my. I hope he's smiling in heaven.